I think most people want that Shopify-like checkout experience because it's just familiar on the internet. That's what people are used to experiencing it and they want it on their WordPress e-commerce sites. But unfortunately, this is kind of what the WordPress e-commerce checkout experience is like right here. This is WooCommerce and it sure ain't pretty. Now you can use something like cart flows, which will improve this dramatically. But here's another e-commerce experience for WordPress. It's not that good either. It's pretty bad. And this right here is the layout that we're going to make in this video. It's just going to take a little bit of your time. It has the Shopify type of, uh, of aesthetic. It has the contact contact information on the left, the payment information on the left. It has the order summary here on the right. It's simple, it's elegant, and it's effective. And it's sure to make your conversions go through the roof. Now, this is using Surecart, which is a free e-commerce platform form for WordPress. It's really great stuff. And I'm going to show you how to make this. Now, step one is to add Surecart to your website. It's super easy. You'll go to plugins, click on add new in the top right here, search for Surecart. And it's one word like this, Surecart. I put Surecat as a uh, cart's probably going to take you to the right place. Uh, and here it is, Surecart. Just install and activate it. I have Surecart installed and activated on this website. When you activate it, it's going to have you create an account. You can optionally connect it to your payment gateways and all of that. And what you're going to want to do, and then you're going to be at this screen. What you're going to want to do then is create a product. And so I have a few products that I've created here already. You're going to want to go and create a product. It's super easy. You just click on add new, uh, give it a name and then choose a few prices. Uh, this is what a product that's all filled out will look like name, uh, price and all of that. But your checkout form is going to be right here underneath forms. And it's going to, it's going to say checkout hyphen store checkout. This will be like the central checkout, but Surecart lets you create unique checkout forms for specific products if you want. Um, but let's go ahead and customize the default checkout. We can call it that the default checkout. Now, Surecart's also going to create a page right here called Checkout. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And you can see out of the box, it doesn't look that bad. It kind of inherits some of the styling of the theme that it's installed on. It doesn't look bad, but it's not quite the Shopify experience. So let's get started with that. So let's go to Surecart and click on forms and we're going to click where it says checkout. And this right here is that layout that you just saw. So let's click this gray area right here and it should pull up some options here on the right. And we're going to want to click on change template. And when you do that, there's a little warning. We click on OK. Uh, and then right here, there's some checkout templates you can choose. I'm going to go ahead and choose this one right here. That's called the two column. So let's click on that and then click on next. And then let's click on create sure card. Let you have a custom thank you page and all that. We're just going to leave that default. Perfect. And so here we have it, but everything's a little backwards, right? We want this contact information and address and all that on the left. And then we want the order summary on the right. Now this is all built using the WordPress block editor. So we can click this icon here and uh, it's going to expand what's called the list view. Let's go ahead and expand these out. So here's the first column and here's the second column. This is one of the things I love about the block editor in Shortcut by extension. You can just like rearrange these like that. <laughs> so I literally just switch them. Now you can expand these as well to reveal the different elements that make up the checkout. I'll go ahead and just uh, remove the express pay because I don't think I have that set up. Uh, and then we have everything here. Now you can start customizing this all you want. You can change labels, add custom fields. You can do all that, but that's not the purpose of this video. So let's go ahead and click on the first column. Now, what we need to do is add some padding, some spacing. So there's this option here that says dimensions. So whenever you click on anything, there's options here on the right. So for this, I'm going to put 70 and you see how it kind of pushed it and gave it some space. That's what I wanted to do. Looks pretty good actually. So now what I want to do is slightly change the background color. And so here's the option. I'm clicked on column and I can change the background color some, and this, you could set it to whatever you want. So Shopify has some kind of, kind of like a gray or something. You can put 
whatever color you want. You can click in here, pop in a color code, and you could you can make this whatever color uh, that you prefer. So uh, that actually looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and keep that. Now we want to do uh, some spacing here on the right column. So I'm going to click right here for the column. And I want to do the same thing. I want to add 70 for the spacing. Ooh, but you can see right here for the spacing, it's not giving me the number, but I believe I can click this icon here. Yep, there we go. And now I can enter 70. Perfect. So you can see everything's lined up perfectly fine. This is great. So I will go ahead and click on update. So now I've changed the default checkout form, but I still need to change the layout, hide the header and the footer and give it the nice floaty hover effect and all that. Let's uh, go here and do a refresh. You're going to see it doesn't quite look how we want it yet, but that's okay. We're going to fix that all right now. So I'm going to go get out of this view by clicking on the WordPress logo here on the top left. I'll click on pages. And now I want to go into that store checkout page. Now here's where the way I do it is probably going to be a little different from the way that you do it. I'm going to use the page building tool I have here for the block editor called Spectra. You don't have to use this. You could use Elementor. You can use a different block thing. You can use actually any page builder. You'll just pay attention to the concepts that I show you right now and uh, you'll be able to do this. So this is the block editor. So I'm going to click right here to see the list view again. And you can see I've got a container and a heading and then I have this uh, checkout form. So first I want to actually hide the header and footer on the page. That would be this area up here and this area down here. So what I'm going to do is this is an option in the theme. I have the Astra theme on this site. All themes are a little different, but here I can click where it says A for Astra. It pulls up the options. I can click right here where it says disable elements and toggle these two options on and it's going to disable the header and disable the footer. Let's click on update and go to the front end and you can see so far so good. Now we just need to work with this layout some. So let's go back into our design and what I want to do is I want to add a container. So I'm going to click right here. I'm going to click on container. And when I scroll down, you can see it's adding a container for me. And this container, I'm just going to choose one right here for one column. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a uh, some, I'm going to add some options to this container, but let's put something in it first because it'll be easier. I'll click this and I'm going to type image and I'm going to add a, a logo image. You don't have to do this. You can add some text if you want. So let's go to the media library and choose the logo. This right here is fine. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to click here and I'm going to align it into the center. This is exactly what I wanted. Now I'm going to click back into the block settings and here's settings for this. So you can manipulate it how you want, but I want to get now into the container settings. So I'm going to expand here and here's that new container that I added. So let's take a look at some of these settings. So right here, it says container. I'm going to expand it and we want this container to take up the full height. So we want there to be no scroll in here. We want it to be the full height from top to bottom. Now, the way you do that right here is where it says the minimum height. We're going to click this option here that says kind of hard to see. It says VH and that's basically percentage and we're going to put 100. So it's going to take up 100% of the space. Now, the next thing we want to do, you notice how the logo went into the center. We, we don't want that. <laughs> we want the items aligned to the top. So that's this option here where it says Flexbox properties. We'll open it up. And so here's different settings for that. And you can see where it says justify content. It's set to go into the center. I want it to go to the top. See, there we go. When I click on that, it goes to the start of the container, the top, just like that. Now let's go ahead and give this a background color. I'm going to click on style and for type, I'll choose color. There's other options here and I'll click here and choose one of the colors of that. Yeah, there we go. That's a, a nice, simple color. You can make this color whatever you want. It's the same thing. You can click in here, pop in a color code, use a theme color. It's all your choice. Next, what I want to do is click on the container and down here you should see a plus. So I'm going to click on that and now I want to put another container. There we go. This is what's called an inner container. And inside this inner container, I'm going to put that 
checkout form. Now the checkout form is up here, but here's the list view. I can expand and I can click on the checkout form and literally drop it in the container down here just like that. Let's get it in there. So that is not in it. Let's go just like there we go. No, there we go. I dropped it right on top and it moved my checkout form in there perfectly. So now I can click on this container that was there and just get rid of it. I don't need that anymore. And we just have this. So let's go ahead and save it and just look at our progress. So I'm going to do a refresh and you can see so far we're getting there. Now, the reason there's a little scroll is because of this admin bar. If I was not logged in, there wouldn't be any scroll like this. But so far, this is actually looking pretty nice. I can already see where I made a mistake, where I top aligned everything. This should actually be center aligned. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add a white background color here and let's add some box shadow. That's all that we need to do. So first let's fix my mistakes. I'm going to click on container, click on general. It was in the Flexbox properties. I meant to go like that. I shouldn't have made it top aligned. Perfect. That's what I wanted to do. Next, I'm going to click on the container that I placed my checkout form just like this. And I'm going to click on style and for color uh, right here for background, I'm going to click on color and I'm going to make that white just like that. It has a nice white background color. Perfect. Next, I'm going to click where it says box shadow. Now, this is one of the things I like about Spectra is they give you presets so I can choose any of these by just clicking on it. And of course, I can adjust the settings too. Um, there we go. That's nice and floaty. So now let's click on update. Let's go to the front end and do a refresh. And you can see now it's centered it. And I put the white background and that looks good. Um, the things, and you can see I've got the box shadow. So the things I need to do is get rid of this little bit of spacing right here. You see that? That little bit of spacing. I need to get rid of that. Uh, and I probably want to maybe add a little spacing underneath the logo here. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So the spacing is probably coming from this container. No, it's actually coming from this container right here. So I'm going to click on that and then let's scroll down and there's an option here. This is spacing. There it is. It says padding. So there's little 10 pixels of padding all around it. Let's just get rid of that. I'm going to go put zero. That probably did it. Let's go ahead and click on update. Go and take a look. Okay, so that did it. That totally got rid of it. Actually, this is looking pretty good. So now let's just add a little spacing here. There's multiple ways of, of adding spacing, but I can actually click on the logo image, click on style, and there should be margin. There we go. We can use margin to put a little margin underneath it. Now you'll want to check this when you're doing mobile uh, optimizing this for mobile. All right, for bottom, let's go ahead and put maybe 30 pixels, not 300, 30 pixels, just like that. Do an update, go to the front end and see it. There we go. That's a little bit more balanced and actually we're there. So you can, like I said, you can change any of the colors that you want. You can change the fields. All of this is fully customizable. You can see it just took a few minutes of your time. Now, uh, just to be on the safe side, let's test this in an incognito window to make sure we don't have this little scroll right here. Hey, and here it is. Uh, this looks fantastic. Pop your information in there. There's no scroll. I'm scrolling up and down. Now, if you add a bunch of custom fields and this height increases, when I scroll up and down, uh, there, there will be a scroll up and down if it takes more than the page height. Uh, also, if I was to shorten this, you can see like that, I've shortened it. It will have a little bit of a, a scroll in it like that. And that's all there is to creating a Shopify-like experience. You saw how easy that is, how flexible it is. Everything's fully customizable as a matter of fact, and it's just up to your imagination. And it's really easy to accomplish layouts like that with any page builder. I'm using a free one, Spectra's free. There's no cost to that as well. Shortcuts free, Spectra's free, <laughs> WordPress is free if you have a hosting account. So you're getting pretty far in this video. But what I need you to do before you go any further is to give it a thumbs up uh, if you like content like this and it helps you out. I'd really appreciate that. But that's it. Uh, if you want a full tutorial video for Shortcut, I'll be sure to add one to the video description down below. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.